Hi everybody! Welcome to Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris. Today I want to tell you a story. It is a story about a paleontologist who found golden trilobites. These trilobites are really special. They're not actually made with real gold. They're made with pyrite, basically iron sulfate. So we think that the conditions at the bottom of the ocean where these trilobites were living was very much like this swampy little lake. It's very anoxic. There's not much oxygen getting down to the bottom. You have all kinds of decomposers and things using up the oxygen. So just a very low oxygen background. This allowed the iron that was in the water to not oxidize or rust, but rather to join with sulfur and create the iron sulfite or the pyrite. When the animals died, this settled into the soft tissues as they slowly decomposed and made these pyrite preservations of the soft material, something rarely found in trilobites. What's really important about them is that these fossils have preserved soft tissues. In fact, most of our understanding of soft tissues came from these very early, very unusual finds. These fossils were found by a paleontologist named Beecher. Beecher went all over upstate New York and other regions finding some of the fossils that are really nice fossil collections in the 19th century. Some of them ended up in some famous museums like the Yale Peabody Museum and the Museum of Natural History. However, when Beecher passed on, nobody knew exactly where the golden trilobites came from. And so for about a hundred years, these really incredible and scientifically important fossils were lost to history. They had the museum samples, but nobody knew where they could possibly find any more of these. So now, a hundred years later, the fossil beds with these golden trilobites was finally rediscovered by some paleontologists and by Mr. Martin, who has been very active in uncovering rare trilobites in the upstate New York area. Mr. Martin decided to excavate the area. He actually cleared about 100 meters of this rock. And he's very carefully going through it and finding some of these really incredible pyrotized trilobites with the soft body tissues. Because it costs a lot of money, he actually let my friend and I buy a small section of this outcrop to excavate and carefully go through it as well to look for some of these really special trilobites. So hopefully we'll have luck. This is not gonna be a one day adventure. This is gonna be something where we're removing layer by layer, doing it in a scientific manner, but we'll bring you in for the important stuff. So come along on this journey and we'll see if we can find some of these elusive golden trilobites. So my friends, once again, I'm gonna ask if you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe and give me a thumbs up, that helps out a lot. Thank you so much. Without further ado, here we go on the trip to find the lost golden trilobites. Hi everybody, this is the trip to the Beaches Trilobite Bed, or allegedly the Beaches Trilobite Bed. So far, haven't found those uh, really remarkable fossils. This site was lost for a long time. It was written up by Beecher and other paleontologists in the late um, 19th century, and then it was unknown where the site was. And a paleontologist rediscovered this site. He has used machinery to remove the topsoil, However, that machinery has cost a lot of money, and to raise money, he's actually allowed some of us small claims on the uh, property. 
So right now I'm working a claim. My, my friend Gus and his son and I are working one claim. So far, I haven't had too much success. Uh, I'm wondering if it might be user error. It might be if I'm not seeing the fossils that are there. So this time what I'm doing is I dug sort of a staircase shape into the quarry. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to take a sample from each of these layers and try and figure out where the fossils are. I did find some cephalopods, but I did not find those uh, rare trilobites. What's really special about these trilobites is that they have appendages. You very rarely find such good preservation that the appendages, the arms and the legs rather, are with the little trilobites. If you pan over to this direction, this is not my claim, but I believe this is the claim where the uh, Museum of Natural History is working. These are such, such important trilobites, they would love to find them as well for the museum. So the Museum of Natural History is also working this site. Our claim is over here. And what I'm digging at, into is a small section here to sample from top to bottom to try and figure out where the really good fossils are because so far they've been elusive. So I'm going to bucket this up, take it home, very carefully go through it all at a leisure, and then I'll hopefully have, and of course identifying on the buckets which layers are which, so I can get a better idea of where these really good fossils are supposed to be. Even though I am taking all this back, I'm also, of course, keeping an eye and if any good fossils do pop out, I don't want them to get damaged. But so far, that has not been an issue. Let me explain why this place is so important. It is known for the paratization of soft tissues. Basically, the mineral iron sulfate in this very low oxygen atmosphere where these prehistoric creatures were living settled in to their tissues when they became buried and actually preserved the soft tissues. Other than this, we'd have very little idea of the of what the anatomy of these little trilobites were. It comes from this, it comes from this site which had been discovered over a hundred years ago and then lost to time. Well, Mr. Martin has dug this out and we're now able to excavate in this uh, due to uh, his generosity. We really appreciate that very much. And I'd like to just tell you about the importance of it. They made a really important discovery. Not only did they find soft tissues, but they found what appeared to be eggs inside the heads of these trilobites. And it looks like actually that's where the females were releasing their eggs from actually from the side of their head, which sounds weird, but that's the way horseshoe crabs do it. And so being there closely related and uh, the horseshoe crabs actually look a little bit like giant trilobites, it's not such a stretch of the imagination to understand this. Well, I highly suggest you read this paper uh, by Dr. Farrell, uh, Marcus Martin, and other paleontologists who studied this in depth and learned a lot from this exceptional preservation. told that the more difficult layers tend to have better fossils, and this is a tough layer, so it's a good sign. It gets to about just above your waist. All right, we are working in the Beecher's Trilobite bed. We are very lucky to be able to be here. It's uh, by permission of the owner. And we are working our way into these layers. Now, some of these layers are gonna have really nice pyritized trilobites. It's a little bit difficult for us to see today because once again, we are working in the rain. 
So, but luckily we're going to be able to come back to the site and keep working on this little orange section. So my friend and coworker on the site, Gus, gave me this stratigraphic column that tells us what we can find in this particular portion of the beach or trilobite beds. It's broken up into many different layers, some of them much more phosphoriferous than others. We've gotten to the point where we can recognize what's called the 822, see the highlighted in pink, and the 906 layers. These ones are known to have complete trilobites. The other ones have bits and pieces, but it's the whole ones that are obviously the most desirable. So we're going to be looking for the trilobites in these two layers. When we get a little bit below those, below the 822 and 906, all the way down to what's called the 1004 layer, that is the one that's supposed to have these really well paratized trilobites. So that's the goal. It's not something we're going to do in one day. This is actually going to be an ongoing project to get down there, but we'll be hopefully finding fossils all the way. We've been working our way down, trying to figure out where the fossils are. We think there's supposed to be a lot towards the bottom. So that means we got to dig our way down to the bottom. But this is what we do. It's a little bit hard to see, but I did find a nice cephalopods. All right, so, so far Grant has been finding most of the trilobites in his up top and bottom. Yep, so far he's been finding the most. There it is. So this is one of those little trilobites that we're looking for. In this rock, we're looking at a very big pyrotized or golden colored cephalopod. There's also a second one right above it. So this is uh, what this site is famous for. Let's see, we spent our first day over in the feature trilobite beds. Did a lot of work. Found a couple little trilobites. So it was worth it. And we can come back here, which is super awesome. So Gus found something nice. Can you tell what this is? This is an Ordovician sponge. Very delicate. If you look at them with a magnifying glass, you can actually see the little spicules or particles that make them up. The second one's a little bit harder to see, but they are sponges. Good work, Gus. Beautiful sight. Here's the work we did on day one. It was all kind of looking like this. Now we have a couple of sections that are blocking out a little bit. Just the beginning. We're not even down to the good layer yet. What we're looking at over here are some scraps that I've taken home from the site and let them weather out over the winter. And what I'm doing now is very carefully going through the fragments and seeing if I can find any fossils. So far found raptolites and some partial trilobites. They are not the pyrotized trilobites that we're looking for, but at least there is some signs of life in this material. So I'm very carefully going through it, even though it's a little bit slow and painstaking, but rewarding, finding some stuff. Well, I don't know what the heck this thing is. Maybe you do, viewers, if you know what this is, let me know. Here are some more of the find from the first trip. All right, my friends. So that ends the first part of our Lost Golden Trilobite episodes. In the next one, we're actually going to get down to that 
822 and 906 layers and start to see the full trilobites uh, become exposed. Eventually working our way to the Beecher's bed, the one that is supposed to be full of these golden trilobites. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to uh, slam that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like it. That helps the channel. So thank you so much. So join us again for the search for the lost golden trilobites.